Let's right. get off them. Let's uh let's move on. Let's go ahead. I like these other two. Let's talk about the Miami Dolphins. Okay. Six wins. They needed quarterback, safety, and offensive line help. Um I, a lot of draft capital too. So Yeah, a ton. Uh yeah. just a ton. Um I all right, so let's let's kind of roll through these picks really quickly. Uh, they got Tua Tagovailoa quarterback at number five. At number eighteen, they got Austin Jackson out of USC. I thought that was a little high. Uh, they got Noah, but they needed a tackle. I don't think they could trade back. No, no. I, I think I think Austin Jackson could be good. I think he could. I think be he all was right. the best tackle left on the board, and they needed a tackle, and they couldn't trade back. Yeah. Uh, cornerback, they got Noah Igbenogni from yep. Auburn, um, mm-hmm. who. Was, I he was he was fine, I guess. I thought he was good. I thought he, he had a good year. It was yeah, but it was a bit of a reach to take him in the first round. I mean, it was just it was a little crazy. Um, but I mean, you know, this is Gary hating on Auburn. No, no, no. This is like nobody else had him projected to be a first round pick. Like he yeah, okay, that's fine. I mean, it, it, let's see at the Huddle Report, he was uh, he was ranked number fifty four on their board. Like he was nowhere close. But to that's being the a Huddle round. Report. Right. Uh, agreed, agreed. Where, where was the kid from Bill Belichick's draft I, projected? Oh, Belichick's. 180th? 500th? Yeah, but the Patriots had, like, the worst value of any team but, okay. on the— But that it, doesn't mean it's wrong. I, agreed. I understand. I just—I thought it was a little bit of a reach to go there. But if they really like him, then I don't see—you know, I, I could see him being good. They wanted so, a cornerback that faced up against some of the best wide receivers in the history of college football. And they, This yeah. kid did that. Yeah, he certainly did. He certainly okay. did. We at least know this— these DBs taken out of the SEC, especially the SEC West this year. They've all been tested. They, they were all at least tested. Okay. Yes. This wasn't Becton who had two games against real talent. All right. Yeah. And and the kid on top of that had to had to go against AJ Brown and DK Metcalf last year, who both ended up being stud wide receivers in the NFL in yeah. the first season. I'm, I'm I'm just telling you, I think he's way better than you're giving him credit for. I, I like their draft. I like their draft a lot. Oh no, I, I I do as well. And obviously we'll get to you know, like, dislike, love, hate, whatever. Uh, interior offensive lineman Robert Hunt out of Louisiana, uh, you know, UL Lafayette, whatever you want to call him. Uh, they took Raquan Davis from Alabama in the second round. They got safety Brandon Jones out of Texas, who, when he was healthy, was great. Uh, interior offensive lineman Solomon Kindley out of Georgia. That's another massive dude. Uh, Just big body. Yeah, they got uh, Jason Stobridge out of North Carolina. They got edge rusher Curtis Weaver out of Boise State, who was an insane value pick. Uh, in, this in kid the fifth fell, round. but do you think it's just Boise wasn't typical Boise dominant? No, I think I think there know, had to the be some schools. There had to be something else going on. There, there had to be something else. Like I, I don't know what it is. Like I haven't seen any reports. See Boise players get taken the way we usually do. But not that they have ten or twelve, but they usually have two or three that get drafted. But they get drafted pretty early. Let's see on the on the PFF big board. Uh, Curtis Weaver was the twenty sixth best prospect, and they got him at the, let's see, 164th pick. Yeah. So there was something else going on there. Some, I don't know. Something, what something's weird here. I yeah. thought that was a steal. I just thought, holy shit, man. Yeah. I mean, he's an incredible pass rusher, and and they needed some help with that as well. Yep. Um, you know, on top of that, uh, I'm a toy is what I thought. So they they got they got Malcolm Perry in the seventh round, uh, quarterback out of Malcolm or out of uh, out of Navy. Navy. Yeah, who, who, I love that pick too. Versatility, baby. Oh, yes, he can be a running back. He can be a wide receiver. He can be. He they have him as quarterback slash wide receiver, um, and and I think he's going to do a lot. I think he's going to line up in all of them. I I agree a hundred percent. Now, their sixth round pick. This is the one that drives you crazy. I don't. I just don't understand. I don't. Blake I don't Ferguson out of LSU. This, guy, this is my boy. Long he got LSU to fourteen. It was a little bittersweet for me because I just don't understand this. Why would you draft a long snapper? I don't I don't even know what makes a long snapper a good long snapper. I uh <laughs> here's here's my here's my argument, okay? Here's my argument. You've heard this conversation at least three times already, Gary. Yeah. Because you have to listen to me talk all the time. I'll put it out there to the ethos. There are thirty two long snappers in the NFL. That's the list. Yeah, there's, there's no Nobody backup. has a backup. There are 32 of them. They usually play for a decade or two, all right? They can last a long time. That means there are 32 human beings in the whole world that do this. I promise you, you can go find somebody who's one of those 32 
to do it for the league minimum of now three hundred something thousand dollars a year. Okay. I don't understand why you would spend a draft pick and you say, oh, well, it's a six round draft pick. That doesn't matter. Um, let me interest you on a guy that got taken two picks later to the Brownies. Donovan Peoples Jones is the ultimate dynamite flyer, I believe. This yeah. guy had a second or third round draft grade. Uh, and he failed. You can talk about the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, well Tom is, is that, but that's hard to. That's shooting. I understand. I'm not saying that you need to be shooting but for a Hall of Famer. A, you're this. at least swinging the bat. You're at least taking exactly. the bite at the apple to see, is this the best apple you've ever had? Right. When you get the long snapper, if he is the greatest long snapper in the history of the NFL, people will still not know his name. How does that equate to wins? That, it, it won't. It won't. The, the margin of difference between number one and number 32 has to be this. Yeah. Uh, McKinnon jumped in on the on the chat. He said, Dolphins absolutely killed this draft. Flores is building something up. I'm actually pretty excited to see. Michael Me said, too. Michael I, just, said, uh, I don't understand. It. Listen, had oh, they yeah. taken Thaddeus Moss right here, I would. This would be the first, first team that I would say, love, love, love. Take <laughs> a swing on a kid that was injured, and that's the only reason he fell. Yeah. He had a hell it. of a draft, draft grade, realized he had foot surgery, and nobody wanted to touch him. Swing at him. And if he's a bust, throw him away because he was a six round pick and pay this guy three hundred grand, call him and say we really want you to come. Uh Chris's favorite long snapper got picked up. Uh Michael jumped in with that and then he said Malcolm Perry was a bill type pick. A hundred percent. hundred percent. I mean it makes sense. Uh oh, and, and that's oh, what Brian oh, Malcolm Doors Perry. Did. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mal- sorry no, Malcolm yeah, Perry. Ferguson. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt that Bill had that name circled on his board and he was waiting to, to the last pick to take them. No, yep. no, no doubt. Everyone keeps bitching that I'm not drafting a quarterback. I'll draft a quarterback, you sons of bitches. <laughs> take a guy, put him a wide receiver. And that's Brian Flores out of that Bill Belichick tree. He saw him and he was Julian available. Edelman. Julian Edelman played quarterback for Kent State. Yep, exactly. He's thrown five passes for the Patriots. Yep. All of them touchdowns. Believe that. Boom. Do what you got to do. I uh, I honestly love what they did in the draft. I thought it was I great. I, 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 I agree with McKinnon, man. I, but I, I like Brian Flores. I think Brian Flores is the first guy out of the Belichick tree that actually – and I was worried because I thought he had potential, and I thought they forced him taking a job too soon. I didn't know that he'd be ready because he only ran the de- – he wasn't even officially the defensive coordinator yeah. – but he had only been running the defense for one year. Other than that, he was a position coach. I, I really didn't think, have experience. I think that this organization has turned a new leaf. They have obviously yeah, changed over quite a bit. This looks like a well-run franchise right now. Uh, and obviously, the only thing that we've seen is what they did last year. And they didn't they didn't tank last year. They went out and they with, with the guys that they had. With bums. With bums. They won, what, five games? I mean, yes, and they fought hard in game. The games that they lost towards the end, after the first couple of games where they got the shit kicked out of them, yeah. and people thought tanking for Tua and it's over because they were just getting housed it by everybody. They turned around and they were in dog fights, man. They they won at the Patriots in a game that the Pats had to have for one, and two, them winning actually hurt them in the draft. They didn't care. They didn't get. They wanted Those to win. Those guys fought like hell for Brian Flores. I'm yeah. I'm excited to watch this team, just because I I want good things for Flores. I really really do. Yeah, I I agree with you. All right, uh, we're already an hour plus deep 